then let's start the tissue level of organization now we are moving with the tissue level of organization so let us remind that where it is in our kingdom animalia chart kingdom animalia sub kingdom u metazoa kingdom animalia sub kingdom u metazoa okay sub kingdom u metazoa and grade grade the grade radiata or diploblastica grade radiata which is also called diploblastica so in this we will find the tissue level of organization tissue level of organization we can see here so what are the phylum phylum nidaria and phylum tenofera tenofera nidaria and tenofera okay now let's start here this is the lowest level of organization who is the lowest level tissue level is the lowest level of organization among the eumetazoan among the eumetazoan that means you need to understand kingdom animalia is also called metazoa and after that we classified it into parazoa and eumetazoa so in eumetazoa that we have the grade radiata and grade bilateria so in the grade radiata we are saying now the tissue grade so among the eumetazoan this will be the lowest level of organization that you have to that you need to understand among them it is the lowest level of organization okay so the exhibited by diploblastic animal that we said the grade radiata is also called diploblastic with tissue grade of organization that means we need to co correlate all this radial symmetry and diploblastic nature and tissue level of organization these are the properties of grade radiata also called diploblastica that we need to remember that means learning this particular topic through kingdom animalia chart whatever we learn so then where do you see this in case of nidarian then we are adding now in tenophores also in these animal the cells which perform the same function are arranged in the form of tissues are arranged in the form of tissues the cells of a tissue together perform their common function as highly coordinated unit and this coordination due to the presence of nerve cell and sensory cell in case parazoan phylum porifera only cellular grade of organization is present no coordination because of the absence of nerve cell and sensory cell now we are saying that due to the presence of nerve cell and sensory cell aggregation of the cells can form the tissue and tissue level of organization is uh, the division of labor at tissue level will find here so the formation of tissues is the first key transition the formation of tissue is the first key transition in the evolution of the animal body plan we have three key transitions milestones we can say that in that the first key transition is the formation of that uh, tissue great organization the formation of tissues okay so that is by the coordination of the cell by the coordination of the nerve cell and sensory cell here the development of bilateral symmetry not here not here development of bilateral symmetry in great bilateria so that will be the second key transition development of the bilateral symmetry is a second key transition who is the first key transition that uh, tissue formation of tissues okay so the origin of perivisceral body cavity siloom true body cavity is the third key transition in the course of evolution we are going to say there are three milestones three milestones that is one is tissue formation for the first time in the course of evolution then after the second key transition is said to be the development of bilateral symmetry the okay, development of bilateral symmetry and true body cavity siloom is the third key transition that they are saying there are three milestones first key second key and third key transition so what to be learned from the tissue level of organization that it belongs to kingdom animalia the kingdom eumetazoa great 
radiata or diploblastica. They have tissue level of formation. Example, phylum Nidaria and phylum Tenosa. Now, moving on. That organ level of organization. Need to talk about the organ level of organization. So in case of organ level of organization and aggregation of the different kinds of tissues which is specialized to form a particular function is called an organ. Organ is developed from the tissues. Okay, so organ level of organization is the further advancement over the tissue level in the evolution of levels of organization. That means some tissues unite and form an organ. So this organ level of organization is appeared for the first time in the members of phylum Platyhelminthes. This is actually from NCRT textbook we extracted that was mentioned in the bracket. So, but actually when we say in case of uh, kingdom animalia chart, that what we discussed in the case of kingdom animalia chart, grade bilateria or triploblastica include, grade bilateria or triploblastica include organ system grade of organization, which is from phylum platyhelminthes to cardata, isn't it? From phylum platyhelminthes to cardata. But here we have a small change we are making. Argon system level of organization is there from phylum nematoda to cardata. Phylum nematoda to cardata. So only platyhelminthes is having this particular organ grade of organization, organ level of organization in case of phylum platyhelminthes. We still split we are doing according to the chart. We'll end like that platyhelminthes to cardata is having organ system level, but uh, based on NCRT text, we are saying in case of phylum platyhelminthes, organ level of organization present, organ system is there from phylum nematoda to cardata. That is a small change we are doing here. That's all about the organ level of organization where tissues form organ. Now, let's come to the organ system level of organization. The highest level of organization among the animals and is exhibited by the triploblastic animal here uh, uh, that we have, we have to remove these platforms because they belongs to phylum platyhelminthes. So that from here onwards we need to start. Nematoda, Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemicardata and Cardata. Okay, till Cardata we have this kind of organ system grade of organization. Okay, so let me give the address to you, the kingdom animalia. So where we are exactly that we need to see here, kingdom animalia. So I'm overwriting here just to, for our remembrance, kingdom animalia. Classified into two sub-kingdoms, sub-kingdom Parajova and sub-kingdom Eumetajova. Okay, so in the sub-kingdom Eumetajova, grade radiata, we are completed here, radiata or diploblastica with tissue grade of organization, phylum nidaria and tenophora. Now we are moving with grade bilateria or triploblastica. Bilateria or triploblastica, except platyhelminthes, according to NCRT, that uh, is with what type of organization, organ system grade of organization. Obviously, we need to say here, organ system grade of organization is also, the animals with organ system grade of organization also exhibiting bilateral symmetry and triploblastic nature. Bilateral symmetry and triploblastic nature. That can be seen over. Now, let's start reading. In the triploblastic animals, that evolution of the mesoderm, the third layer, the third germ layer, resulted in structural complexity. In these animals, the tissues are assembled to form the organs and complex organ systems. So highly specialized sensory and nerve cells bring about the higher level of coordination and integration among the various organ systems to lead an efficient way of life. Organ system in different group of animals exhibit various patterns of complexity. That means we are talking about from lowest group nematoda to uh, that highest group cardata will find the complexity of the organ system definitely will going to be increased. It is maximum in the highest uh, that uh, developed cardate human being. Organ system comparatively well developed, isn't it? 
So that we have a small example here. It is given that in case of a phylum platy helminthi, a complete elementary canal with two openings, the mouth and anus is seen only from nematode onward. But if you see in case of phylum platy helminthi, I am taking a representative of phylum platy helminthi here. In case of phylum platy helminthi, that elementary canal begins with mouth, but but that uh, it doesn't have anus, that not having anus, no opening here. If you take from Ascaris lumbricoides roundworm from phylum nematoda, elementary canal begins with mouth and ends with anus. So that's it. So that we, we have some names here, incomplete gut and complete gut. In case of phylum platy helminthes, that sac-like gut is present. We say this as sac-like gut, sac-like gut. Then in case of uh, nematoda onwards, from ranging from nematoda to cardi, that what do you say, uh, that tube-like uh, gut is present. Complete elementary canal is present with uh, two openings, with mouth, and this is the mouth and this is the anus. So both, both mouth and anus, complete elementary canal, we can say. So uh, that what, what we say ultimately here, there are two types of elementary canals. What are they? The two types of elementary canal. What are they? One is sac-like. One is sac-like. And that uh, what do you say? Incomplete elementary canal. Then other is tube-like. In sac like gut, we'll find only mouth and there is no anus, no opening. In that is example, phylum platy helminthes. From nematoda to cardata, that we'll find both mouth as well as anus, tube like or complete elementary canal, we can say. Okay, so in the same way, uh, we need to see the gut uh, is seen in the animals ranging from the nematodes to cardate that we are seeing here. So similarly, we need to see the circulatory system maybe of two types, open type and uh, closed type. Circulatory system is of two types, open type and closed type. In this type, open type, that uh, the blood pumped out of the heart flows through the open spaces. First of all, let us see what is closed type that we can understand thereafter. What is open type? You see here, this is the heart of human being. We have closed type of circulation. A blood vessel from the left ventricle, we say it as left systemic aorta. Then it will come and uh, form the capillarization at the tissues here, and all the blood vessels will go back and enter into the heart. This is what we say closed type of circulation. This is called as closed type. In this type, the blood is circulated through a series of vessels varying diameter. That means uh, that we say aorta, then after artery, arteriole, capillary. So that means aorta means a bigger vessel, artery, that's a little diameter smaller, arteriole, very smaller. So likewise, capillary is very smaller. So in that way that we can see that from aorta to arterioles to artery to capillary. Then again, they form the venules. We'll discuss in second year detail. But we need to know what is exactly closed type. So series of vessels, we say arteries, veins, capillaries, likewise. So where do you see this? Where do we see this? Uh, this kind of closed vascular system. In annelids, cephalopods, cephalocardates, and vertebrates. So there we can see this kind of uh, uh, closed type. So open type. So how does the open type can be seen over? So how does the open type is seen? In case of uh, cockroach, I am showing to you that open type of uh, circulatory system. A 13 chambered heart is present there in case of cockroach. A 13 chambered, I am not going to draw in detail, just showing the 13 chambered heart, which pumps the blood into the body cavity directly. Sinuses, we say the body cavity. So in this type, in the case of uh, open type, Blood pumped out the heart flows through open spaces, bathing the cells and tissues directly. So blood is pumping out like this. 
okay so that we say there may be blood vessels are present in case of uh, open type but you can't see the capillarization okay so in case of closed vascular system what we said in case of closed an artery will come aorta will come artery arteriole then capillarization and all the capillaries fuse venules veins vena cava likewise there is no opening at all the blood vessel will come and the branch into capillaries and all the capillaries form another blood vessel before capillaries we say artery after capillaries we say vein the details we discuss in body fluid circulation so just see the difference here just see the difference there is a blood vessel here and here when closed and open the blood vessel present but blood capillaries are present only in the closed type you can't see in case of open type okay so definitions wise we learned four definitions here four definitions what are the four definitions we learned complete gut and incomplete gut okay so complete and incomplete gut so gut wise incomplete so what is incomplete gut mouth is present that of mouth is present only one opening mouth is present but anus is there a second opening anus is absent mouth present but anus is absent so where do you see this kind of uh, the sac like gut we say incomplete gut or sac like gut where we see the kind that we are going to see this case in the case of phylum platy helminthes in case of phylum platy helminthes we are seeing this kind of sac like uh, gut okay so i'll show you with the diagram once again to you that i'm showing here so that fasciola hepatica liver fluke we used to say in case of fasciola hepatica the gut is sac like let us see this, this is the mouth opens into the esophagus stomach and now this is divided into two and no opening you see here there is no opening no opening at all so we call this kind of gut as sac like gut only mouth present but anus is absent mouth is present but anus is absent next so example example will write here example phylum platy helminthes from there itself i took an example phylum platy helminthes okay next the second one complete gut complete gut so begins with mouth 